regardless of the entry in Twisted Metal, it's going to have a lot of positives and a lot of negatives. Today we are going to look at the bottom of the barrel, talking about the worst thing about each title in the series. These are of course my opinions, as if that needed to be said, but they are. Make sure to leave your critiques for these games in the comments below, because contrary to some people's mindsets, you can criticize something without hating it. Who would have thought? We will start with Twisted Metal 1, where this is quite easy for me. Being the first game in a series, you could choose a multitude of things to pick at, but for me, Lack of character diversity is a big one. An important aspect for a game that has a very repetitious gameplay loop is having the characters you are playing as feel different from one another. Unfortunately, practically every special weapon feels the same, so really wanting to delve in replaying all of these stories is kind of hard to do without a goal of 100%ing the game or something, which the addition of trophies on PS5 or retro achievements really help out with this. On the original PS1 version, it's kinda rough. 80% of the roster on paper has the exact same special weapon, just a projectile that goes forward with only a few standouts, that being Outlaw, Thumper, Spectre, and Hammerhead, which is only four characters. You could include Roadkill and Warthog into this conversation if you really wanted to because their specials track, but I personally don't want to put them here because the premise is so similar to the normal straight shooting. And the best part is, most of them are not really good in the damage department either, forcing us to look at characters in a more one-dimensional light, that being can they ram or can they not. It kind of feels like after you play as a larger vehicle and then a smaller one, you've essentially experienced everything from a gameplay standpoint. Outside of running and gunning and then ramming, what do you really have? Sadly, nothing. Those are basically the only factors that differentiate characters as well, also putting some in really bad spots balance-wise. I've always felt like Spectre, Outlaw, Crimson Fury, to name a few, just completely useless. With the special damage being so low on average here, and if the character cannot utilize ramming to maximum effectiveness, it just kind of feels like the character is a waste. Not a character someone would actively choose to play since they feel very flaccid, unless you're just a big fan of a cop car, or Spectre of course. No! This is obviously first entry in the series syndrome, since with every other entry, characters started getting more diversified playstyles, allowing for people wanting to actually test them all out. Sadly, for the first game, over-redundant characters is just something you need to deal with. For the time, just being able to drive around in a 3D environment was captivating enough for kids to be engaged with the game. But as time goes on, that stops being cool and you're kind of just left with this. Depending on who you ask, you can also toss level design in here with a bad aspect. Lots of people don't like how flat they are, which is a reasonable complaint. But for me, lack of character diversity is a much bigger negative. Twisted Metal 2. What is wrong with Twisted Metal 2? A wonderful topic to talk about, honestly, since you know, of course, Best game ever made, no flaws, no problems, echo chamber, can't criticize this game, otherwise you kill cats and try to pull off what John Doe was doing in Twisted Metal Black. But if I really was to say a horrible thing about Twisted Metal 2 that really irritates me, it would have to be the functionality of commands, that being shields, freeze, jump, whichever terms people give to those now. These are very powerful abilities to have at your disposal, almost having a player rely on them at times. Depending on the character you're playing as, you quite literally do. Grasshopper and Twister require a shield to not be a worthless piece of filth. Freezing helps characters like Roadkill get the extra damage off with his special. Jumping can help, I guess, not too many uses in comparison. But when I'm sitting there inputting commands and they just aren't working for whatever reason that may be, it does cause for some very rage inducing moments, especially in a situation where if I'm gonna die, the shield would have saved my life and it just didn't work. I thought initially that I was going insane until plenty of others have told me over time they have a similar issue with the game on hardware or emulation. It's so particular with how you press the buttons for your command to actually come out. Pressing them too fast or too slow, nothing will happen. In the heat of action, unless you've played the game like No Shower Hours and are the Twisted Metal 2 Lord of Skid Marks, getting your abilities to work can be a very frustrating endeavor. I wish there was a bit more lenience to the timing on button commands, allowing for a more consistent playthrough. When I'm sitting there pressing left, right, up 500 times and my freeze doesn't come out, it can be quite daunting. Thankfully, we do have a performance enhancing Game Shark code, making the game run at 30 FPS. 
which generally makes the playthrough a lot smoother visually, of course, and creates a more consistent experience with commands. If you are someone who has struggled with this issue beforehand in Twisted Metal 2, giving this code a try will definitely alleviate the problem. At this point in my life, I will never ever touch this game again without this code being turned on. That's how much of a game changer it is for me at least. Outside of this, some could mention difficulty, which doesn't really bother me too much. Outside of moments where you just drop dead in a heartbeat and you cannot react to a certain attack. Typically when Thumper comes around, that will happen. Generally speaking though, Twisted Metal 2's experience is good overall. I just hate the functionality of command attacks the most. And of course the freeze locking, which is blatantly unfair and annoying. Twisted Metal 3 is a fun game for what it is, where a lot of people will immediately go for the endings as the worst part which can't really be argued. I mean, some of the endings don't even line up with what the bio states, same with the character models. I don't really care that much for a bad ending to ruin the whole game for me. Twisted Metal 1 is the only time where I got irritated about endings because the FMV ones are something special that the whole world needs to see. But for anyone who does care about endings, surely that is the worst part of Twisted Metal 3. In my eyes though, I'd have to say the level design sharing a similar style to Twisted Metal 1, meaning they are very flat with little interesting things to do on them. The difference here is that Twisted Metal 3 is not the first entry in the series, so players expected levels to be a bit more interesting here. And now obviously there is a real reason to this, Contrary to the echo chambers repeating 989 had no idea how to make levels or other bonkers conspiracy theories I've heard from these people. The actual reason for this is due to how the AI is programmed. For whatever reason, at least during this point in time, they weren't able to function properly on more extravagant level designs, so the team was forced to create a lot of grid-like levels. If you look at Tokyo as an example, you can see the floor is actually just a bunch of squares put together. I'm assuming the AI is like this because the whole engine was built up from a racing game, so they probably used the AI from that. Maybe it could make sense from that perspective because that genre doesn't have car combat styled levels. Racing stages are primarily flat tracks. Regardless of whatever the reasoning is, this does not excuse what we are required to experience from playthrough to playthrough. I have finished these games way too many times, like I'm at the point where I can turn the game on, flick it on easy mode, become well spoken, say anything I want to and people will just believe it. Like I can say I fought in World War II, like who wouldn't believe that? Do I know anything about being on the battleground? No I don't, but it doesn't matter because I can sternly speak. So as a World War II veteran, I can tell you, after going through each and every Twisted Metal game, 3's level design stands out in the worst way possible. It's missing the creativity, the high grounds, intrigue, unique art styles that made levels like in Twisted Metal 2 so memorable. Twisted Metal 3 has one level that has an actual interesting mechanic, which is how on the blimp you are required to break a bunch of boxes to stop enemies from spawning in. If you do not perform this action, they will keep coming back. It's small, but there was an attempt at creating something engaging, which I guess I can appreciate. Unfortunately, having level design like this hurts the overall experience of Twisted Metal 3, but I'm glad 989 rectified it hardcore in Twisted Metal 4. 3's levels just kinda suck. Twisted Metal 4 has two big negatives that I bounced back and forth between. One being the performance. Thankfully, I play through emulation so I don't need to deal with the consistent frame rate issues Twisted 4 has, but just because I don't experience it doesn't mean it does not exist at all, something a lot of people need to learn apparently. The chugging scene here, when all the enemies are together, makes the game almost unplayable at times. Attempting the ultimate challenge of putting five goggle eyes in a room together on hard mode will be a disaster. You will be getting a solid four to five frames a second if they activate their specials. This also stems to immortal difficulty. Enemies are very aggressive. They spam weapons like crazy, which in turn creates a miserable borderline unplayable game due to the console not being able to handle everything going on. But I didn't want to pick this because not everyone is affected. However, the thing everyone is affected by, regardless of what they are playing on, is Twisted Metal 4's time to kill. It is way, way too long. Enemies have so much health, they all sort of feel like bullet sponges. I really noticed this recently. I've been spoiled playing the mods for this game, so it made me forget how little impact specials have in the vanilla Twisted Metal 4. They do practically nothing at times. Jones Family, Microblast, Captain Grimm, Minion, just to name a few, do dog shit special damage. It may not seem like the biggest deal since there are of course ways to kill enemies quickly 
typically using auto lobs or weapon cycling bugs, but it should not be understated how important special weapons are to the overall game. That's what defines a character. Aside from the car design or driver, when you see a cool looking special weapon, you're probably going to want to test the character out yourself to see how effective it is. Like Mr. Grimm is usually my favorite pick because the speed and handling is very fast with a strong special weapon, having weak armor on top to balance him out. Glass cannon playstyles are just fun. If you look at Twisted 4's version of Grimm, he's a worthless piece of trash. There is not a single positive with him aside from the bird, which you can't even play as, so it doesn't matter. Most people will just be awestruck when they see how sad the special damage is with this character. This also stems to a bunch of other characters in this game. There's obviously specials that do have impact, like Henchman and Calypso's nuke, Mr. Zombie's head, whatever this thing is. Outside of that, you're not really looking good in the damage department unless it aids in abusing weapon spamming, like every grappling character for example. Super Slam would normally be worthless because the special damage is so low, but he becomes much better since his special holds enemies in a position to utilize the weapon cycling bug. A similar sentiment can be used with Orbital as well. We're just in a very unfortunate circumstance here. Special impact is just trash in this game unfortunately, being the worst part of Twisted Metal 4 to me. Twisted Metal Black, obviously the best game ever made, that goes without saying, but if I really had to say something that I don't like about this game, it would need to be the overall color palette. And yes, I know that's the point of Twisted Metal Black, we can see that with the black part of the name. That still doesn't defeat how bland everything looks though. When I go through a tournament, I feel every level aesthetically is the same. It's missing the pops and intrigue a game like Twisted Metal 2 has, which to this day is still my favorite artistic design in the series. Not only were most of the levels well designed, they had distinct color palettes that made each of them memorable. Even a level that has a lot of darker colors, like New York, there was still a deviation with all the city lights below and other things to break up the visual over redundancy. In black, everything just feels generic, bland, and stale visually, not to mention how lacking the level design is overall, being mostly flat city-like arenas, which is another slight gripe I have with this game. I've seen a lot of people say Snowy Roads is a great standout for black, which confuses me because it's just a small flat land. Like, what's the difference between this and Washington DC from Twisted Metal 3? They're both just flat arenas with nothing going on. My assumption could be due to the fact Snowy Roads is the only level in Twisted Metal Black that stands out visually, purely from the white snow. The one thing I will say though, is that this game does have a great fitting soundtrack to make the artistic vibe pop out, which does have an effect on the player. Going through Black with no music kinda shows how important the tracks are to making the whole vibe and game stand out more. But when I look at this game and then I look at Harbor City, that being Black's unreleased sequel, they were going to rectify this issue tenfold. If I look at this city right here, compared to anything in Black, it makes me wish Black had a color palette similar to this. I don't think the game would have been hurt at all if there was a slight increase when it comes to vibrancy for a more aesthetically pleasing look, possibly making levels stand out more so than currently. Some people adore the truck stop bathroom color palette of Black. I just don't. Harbor City would have been the way to go for me. Outside of this, I don't really think there's many problems with Black. A lot of the endings are kind of similar to each other. The level design is kind of not really great. It's just the color palette that bothers me the most. When it comes to Small Brawl, there is a lot to like in this underappreciated entry. Characters have good diversity, level design and creativity is great, but the one thing that stands out to me as truly awful is the controls. Similar to Twisted Metal 2, but honestly can stem a bit further. My issues arise with two aspects. One, for whatever reason, the reverse turning control is backwards. I'm not really sure what the reasoning is for that, but it can create a lot of daunting moments or janky movement while trying to back up and avoid a missile. You're expecting to go one way, but you just don't. It's hard to explain what I mean without actually experiencing it yourself, but I'm sure if you've played Small Brawl, you know what I'm talking about. The player is required to get acquainted with this if they want to play through Small Brawl. It's not too big of a deal, just a little bit annoying. But the one thing that is a big problem is the command attacks. Which is why I said my biggest issue with this game is similar to Twisted Metal 2. Sadly, here it's probably worse. The only two commands I can pull off consistently is jump and freeze. 
Shield just doesn't work most of the time, being the same input as Twisted Metal Black and Head On, where in both of those games, it works great. Every time I press the command, it works as it should. Here, I can press it 500 times, going very slow or very fast, and it doesn't seem to work consistently. What gets even stranger is how the abilities seem to activate on their own a lot. Occasionally, while I'm playing, miraculously, a shield will activate, having me question what I did to make it happen, because I'm pushing left on the D-pad, so how is this even possible? Or did I mistakenly press right, right, down, down without noticing? It just genuinely confuses me. The same thing happens with mines. I'll end up dropping them constantly, wasting energy that could have been used at a different moment. And worst of all, this game has a special weapon command that I believe was implemented since this game was obviously designed for kids, making it easier for a child to use the command and shoot a special and not need to select it. The problem comes when you're just driving or maneuvering around the level that just activates out of nowhere, wasting your special weapon. It becomes increasingly irritating when they get wasted numerous times during a playthrough. It's the absolute worst when you're fighting a boss since you're going to want everything you can in that situation, but for whatever reason, the command activates that I didn't even know existed for the longest time. I always thought it was some sort of weird glitch, but apparently there was a command for it all along. This wastes energy constantly. To this very day, I still do not understand the command attacks in Twisted Metal Small Brawl. They are by far the most inconsistent thing in this franchise, and I don't think I'll ever wrap my mind around it. There honestly isn't really much wrong with Twisted Metal Small Brawl. We of course have the bosses on hard mode, which are disgusting, but this one issue with the commands happens so often, I can really Really see it souring someone's experience. So for me, this is the worst part of the game by far. Twisted Metal Head On PS2 is my mortal enemy. I don't know if I would go as far to say this game makes me hate fucking life, but there is quite a bit I don't like about the Extra Twisted Edition specifically, which is the one I'm sure most people have played, so I'm going to stick with the forgotten game in the series somehow. The claim actually zero people who have any understanding of this franchise have made. The thing that really brings my piss to a boil about this one is simply the upgrade system. On paper, the idea is honestly not bad. Going through the game, getting little upgrades, slowly powering yourself up, more armor, better special weapons, stronger machine guns. It's interesting. The concept could actually work if they implemented it in a different way. Their attempt at adding an upgrading system doesn't really work for Twisted Metal. It fits more within a longer game. Doing one extensive playthrough, you get a bunch of upgrades, so by the end of the game, your character is strong in multiple fronts. Here, we're playing an 8 to 10 level tournament mode that takes like 30 or so minutes to complete. What ends up happening is your character becomes like a step above Jesus. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can put you down aside from your own stupidity, like by blowing yourself up or something. This is like, you know, not fun. There needs to be some pushback balancing out these upgrades so other characters and mainly bosses can harm you. This whole system also eliminates any type of playstyle or characteristic a pick could have. Mr. Grimm is a great example. Typically, he's the glass cannon guy. Here, that's completely gone. With an armor and machine gun upgrade, he essentially plays like slam, roadkill, whoever you want to put. Boiling it down, the only actual difference is a visual one with a special weapon, since most special weapon upgrades deal the same amount of damage anyways. I've always felt making a tier list for this game is impossible since every character feels identical. You can say this was a portable game all you want to, but why is the PSP version harder than the console version? Why does it function better? None of it makes any sense to me. The PS2 version just actually sucks. You'd assume the PS2 version would be better, but the PSP version is the way to go. But if they really wanted to implement an upgrading system into this game, instead of doing what they did, you might as well just turn this into permanent stat ups for a character to like slowly build yourself up that way, so at least we'd have a reason to replay the tournament mode. Because when our character is like brokenly overpowered, at least we earned it. I really do like the idea brought forth here. Unfortunately, I just don't think it was implemented properly, sort of ruining the game's overall experience for me, and definitely the worst part of it. Twisted Metal 2012, depending on who you ask, there is a lot that can be torn apart about this game. 
like a lot is actually an understatement but i think the unanimously agreed upon negative aspect is the lack of character or charm this series was always known for the one thing that made twisted metal stand out amongst all the other car combat games was having unique designs or drivers to allure a player in without this everyone and everything kind of feels empty and soulless would be the best way to describe it seeing another character driving axel's contraption just looks bizarre axel was memorable because of the character established alongside the vehicle being unique and intriguing to look at you got mortimer with shadow the various military soldiers of warthog a character and charm was associated with them here we just don't have that 2012 did implement a couple new characters or vehicles which i honestly forgot the names of until looking at them just now like we got roadboat i completely forgot about that character that's how memorable they are to me i just look at these new characters thinking to myself like what would the driver be or what is the character behind it but instead it's just a hollow shallow husk using that it's a multiplayer game excuse just doesn't work because it's more than possible to have characters with lore and a backstory within a multiplayer experience plenty of other games before and after have done this even if there wasn't a playable story portrayed just having those drivers represented here somehow would have gone a long way creating drivers for the new characters would have helped astronomically to build up something whether that is player interest towards them an engaging design or some memorability it's a very simple but big aspect removed from 2012 that i usually see ripped on by even this game's biggest fans twisted metal has always had that artistic charm whether the game was really stupid or intriguing unfortunately it was removed for the most part in the last twisted metal game released and with that this was the worst thing about every twisted metal game at least to me i know some people view certain entries in this series as perfect with no flaws and anyone who says otherwise is just a hater or the classic you're just bad at the game but fail to see criticism as a good thing for any aspect in life period everything in the world can be criticized without hating it which is the real lesson for today so as always make sure to leave all of your thoughts on my choices and your worst aspect for every twisted metal entry in the comments below.